scary Ojo board with a 2D image of Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> Uh, hey guys, I'm Angus McCallum, welcome back, also known as King Sangos, and welcome back to the Banjo Kazooie Let's Play. On the last episode, we entered Mad Monster Mansion for the first time, and we got, we almost completed it. But in this episode, we're going to be wrapping things off here, and we should be moving on throughout Grand Tilda Slayer. So, after we got completed the Ojo Board Challenge, the next thing that we want to do is we want to go into this area over here, uh, because there is actually a gate that we need to smash. There's two games that we need to smash. Well, actually, no, there's one. There's one that we need to smash, and it's actually going to make our lives a lot easier because it's going to help Pumpkin Banjo a lot. Alright, so we go in here. There's actually a lot of stuff we can get in here. So all we have to do is we have to double jump over here. Oh, there's one in Boo. Sweet. That makes things a lot easier. Because if you go in here, I think the Piranhas again are here. And once again, I almost, I almost got stuck there. Whoa. Oh, that's the reason why the one bees are there, just so we can get these. Pretty conservative thinking by Rare. I like that. Alright, so we walk in here. And all we have to do is get the notes. And then also get the eggs, because we need eggs. Eggs. Also get rubber rubbers, because we've also expanded them. That switch is there uh, to use if you're stuck and you want to get back up. Alright, so we've got 86, that's good. Alright, so we collected most of the items here. So the next thing I need to do is I need to jump up here and... Whee! In here. It's another swimming section. This is probably one that... And once again, they've done an underwater arrangement for this theme, even though there's such a small little section here. This area is kind of optional to take. You can either come in here as a pumpkin banjo, or you can just come here as normal banjo. I chose to come in as normal banjo because, you know, I thought, like, why not? I... Mm, yeah, it's going to save me some time. I'm just going to keep swimming across. Oh, I had a little bit of a crackle with the audio there. Once again, you need to be very precise with how close you are to the things. Ow. Okay, uh, that works too. We still need to get that Mumbo token. And we need to get that note over there. I think there might be another one. Okay, uh, i got to be careful here. I don't want to hurt myself too much. Alright, let's swim back up. Uh, let me just quickly check if there's another note down here. Because uh, we have an odd number with the notes, funnily enough. Alright, I don't think I can find it. I think there just might be an area where it's like one thing. But if I do, if I am missing one, like if I am missing a piece, I'll be sure to cut the footage and, until I find it. So don't hesitate with that, guys. So don't worry. Alright. But regardless of that, we've uh, completed that area. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to experiment with Pumpkin Banjo. The unique transformation in this map. Or this level. And of course, there's honeycombs, honeycombs being honeycombs, and also another mumbo token. Right, I think that's all the mumbo tokens that I've got. I. But to get to this mumbo skull, it's kind of interesting. You have to jump over this little hedge because you can't step on the uh, you can't step on the hedge because that's actually like um, holly, like it's kind of like a prickly holly of thorns. Okay. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's a non mumbo. There's only two in mumbos. Okay. Okay, I see. Uh, I'll jump up to see. I'll jump in here and see what there is. One gold feather. You're a cheapskate, my boy. So as you can see, we need 20 skulls and tokens for this one. But they better be worth it. There we go. Pumpkin Banjo. Ah, Mumbo proud of pumpkin spell. Make good soup. What? No! No! Yeah, this is Pumpkin Banjo. He is a cute little sweetheart. Now, Pumpkin Banjo is interesting because you do have to do a lot of kind of like backtracking to get to the unique areas where Pumpkin Banjo can only run. But thankfully, there's like short little passages that you can go to. 
as an example, I'll like slowly walk up here so I don't fall off. I'll hop in this side. There we go. There we go. That's the second empty honeycomb piece for this level. And while I'm at it, well, I'll collect all these gold feathers. Holy damn. That is a lot of feathers to collect. I'm so glad I came here because now I wouldn't have to worry about like my uh, gold, uh, gold feather expenditure. Smart words are smart. But on this side, we have nothing. So... This time, we are small enough to enter the bowels of hell. Happy landings, little one. No! Yes, we are where you think we are, guys. Alright, we are making a lot of progress. Awesome. Plus, there's some gold feathers, which I really want. I'm not even going to ask what the stuff I'm standing on is. Like, I don't mind if that's what I think. I, I don't mind if that's what other people think it is. But if it's what I think it is, it shouldn't be hobby. I can't believe you went in there. Now wash your hands, you filthy bear. <laughs> We're not quite done with uh, Thing My World's Banjo yet. Because we still got notes to get. And there is one area we still need to go to. So I'm trying to remember which entrance. I think it's this one. There we go, into the pipe, and there we go. Perfect. Alright, so, awesome. You found all the hundred nuts in this world, well done. Okay, awesome, so we've 100 percent of this level. Awesome, so we've got 20 Mumbo tokens left. And so the only thing that we need to do now is we need to ex exit this world as Pumpkin Banjo. Be careful, though. There are huge... The, like, there are huge... Like, ugh, those guys always scared me when I was younger. So just do what I do. Pumpkin Banjo can't attack and go over here. Now, you're wondering why that I actually needed to turn into Pumpkin Banjo here? Well, I'll tell you why. Because this little spot here, you can only enter as Pumpkin Banjo. And let me just check behind this place. A lot of red feathers... I think you can only get that. Yep, you can only get that as normal banjo. But to be honest, you're not really going to go down here much. It's not really important. You're actually going to enter this little hole. And... You're going to avoid the ghost because the ghost is going to ruin your days. Mumbo is actually here. Mumbo will actually turn you back into normal banjo. Which is actually a unique thing. Like... And then you got to kill the ghost here. Yeah! And get the health. Why are you here, you ask? Well, there is a unique mechanic that is introduced here. That is only introduced in this specific area. So let's find out what it is. So if you go in this and then you slam down on it, you reveal a blue switch. Hit the switch and it raises the water level in Gruntilda's layer. Pretty cool, huh? But you actually can't exit through the level yet, so what you have to do is you have to go back to Mumbo. Force him to turn you back into a pumpkin. Pumpkin making Mumbo hungry. Me get pot ready. No! Alright. So we're not going to exit our pumpkin yet. Because there's still yet one more thing we need to do with pumpkin. Now, if you remember when I said that there were three Cheetos, like three Cheeto books, in the entire layer of Gruntilda's Lair. Well, that's because there's one more near this area. Oh, God, this area is so cool. But it looks so out of place. Like, if you go, if you come out here, you go into a lava-like area. I don't know how they connect. But either way, no complaining. We must get the next objective. Now... This is where you have to be extra careful. The camera angle can be your enemy here. But at least it's better than Super Mario 64's camera angle controls. Those were hard. No sexual puns, please. Yeah. Your bat will tell you and you'll know when my boot swings to and fro. But we got Rentilda. 
Revolting Gruntilda's bedroom has rotting fish hanging from her ceiling. She also has a Veruca plant growing in a pot beside her bed. Filthy old hag. And you'd be sick if you saw her enormous sweaty yellow undies. Oh, you poor dears, your energy is low. Let me fill it up for you. That's better. Okay, I didn't know that. Apparently, from the looks of it, if you're really low health, you can talk to Brentilda and she'll make you, uh, she'll give you likes of life. But, we're into this small little dungeon area. Talk to Cheeto again. Cheeto, bear, and bird are found once more. Another spell they get. If one more page I see you turn, then Grunty shall Cheeto burn! Nasty witch is so, is so cold. I shall I tell, enter red feathers on sandcastle floor in treasure trove cove. Me. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut it off here and I'm going to backtrack to that area. So I shall see you guys just shortly. Alright, so I took the liberty of going back to Treasure Trove Cove in order to uh, type down the new code that we got from Cheeto in the second area. So what he said was red feathers, so let's type it in. R E D da, Where's F? Oh, here we go. F E A T H E, R, and S. Baron Bird, get a hundred red feathers. A hundred maximum now is. All my feathers, it turn makes me sick. Fly to me, you butt I'll kick. But yeah, so I shall see you back in uh, Gruntilda's Lair very shortly. So see you guys then. Alright, so I had the liberty of return- well, I said liberty twice, God damn it. Okay, I returned back to this area, so we're going to see one of the ultimate break in physics and knowledge. The inside is full of water, despite it. But yeah, now that we've elevated the water level in this area, we now can go to like- well, I can't- well, we can't do anything specific here, but we can do something specific in the next few areas. Now, this is where things are going to get really, really interesting. Well, first I'm going to get this Mumbo token over here that I didn't actually get and forgot was actually here in the previous episode. So, okay, we got about 21 right now. So, this is the entrance to the 8th level. This is the second last level in the game. Now, what you're maybe wondering is how to get in that. Now... Technically, the jigsaw podium where it is, is up here. But how do you get there? Well, the way that you normally get there is that what you would have to do is you would have to raise the water level to get up to that specific point. So what most people did, which was kind of funny, that like I thought it was kind of funny that day, what, what they do is they would... Um, Long off tooth and strong of arm, Grunty's got the lasting charm. But anyway, what they would do is, um, well first we'll go up here and we'll find another cauldron. And this cauldron, of course, links just outside to this one, so we got a nice little shortcut there. I don't think we'll be using that because this is pretty much the area we spend most of the time in. So what they pretty much did is, they would fly over here, they would smash this, and then they would hit that. It would cover the entrance to this world, but it would allow them to get to the jigsaw podium. This is not actually how Rare intended you to get that jigs get to that jigsaw podium. Allow me to show you the real way that they intended. So if you swim back all the way to the Mad Monster section, I know this is quite tedious to do, and you don't really want to do it. Like, kids didn't want to do it because of a killer fish over there. But... I always thought this was quite strange how nobody ever really knew about this spot. So you go up here, it's all fine and dandy, and then you notice this iron dot, uh, like this iron thing. You kind of thought to yourself like, oh but silly Angus, that's metal, that's part of the texture, that can't be destroyed. You were saying? This is actually how you were meant to get to the podium stand. So you walk all the way up here, 
and you go to right where it is, smash it, and in you go. So here we are. There's no water outside this area. We are in this area without any water. That is a bloody good accomplishment on my part. Like, this place will start to fill up with water if you raise the water level up, but I've gotten here without raising the water level. So without further ado, let us complete the jigsaw puzzle of the 8th world of the game, Rusty Bucket Bay. Ah, I opened the world without having to flood the area. Sucks to be you guy. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. I won't blame you if you didn't know that's how it worked. Like, I, I didn't know how that's how it worked. Like, it was through sheer curiosity that I found that out. But without further ado... No, 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 no. Woo, woo, that was close. I didn't actually think he'd be there. But no. Without further ado, guys. That thing will end things off here. In the next episode of the Banjo-Kazooie Let's Play, we'll be heading into what is considered by many Banjo-Kazooie fans the hardest level in the game, Rusty Bucket Bay. See you guys then.